It's known by many names. Some find it offensive, others regard it as brown gold, a valuable soil builder and plant fertilizer. When I was growing up, uh, we always had the saying, it smells like money when the manure is out there. For those who use it, manure has become a valuable commodity. It's my impression that um, the value of manure is being better recognized, there's more demand for it. We're seeing more and more farmers implementing satellite technology, GPS, a lot of things that are in use in other industries really to manage this as a resource. Science, various methods, and emerging equipment have made manure management a high-tech business. With the world population expanding beyond 7 billion, Animal manure utilization is going to be an important part of uh, being able to provide the food we need for this growing population. We're the leaders. We need to stay in that role, and agriculture is a great place to be. In Norfolk, Nebraska, hundreds of farmers, industry professionals, commercial manure applicators, consultants, and educators attended the 2011 North American Manure Expo. Here, attendees learned how to make manure more effective and, in turn, farms more profitable industry professionals showcased the latest in technology to help protect the environment and cut costs. I have to talk to the guys the soil and educators taught the science behind how manure boosts crop yields. Manure is at the end and beginning of the nitrogen cycle. Cattle, swine, and other animals feed on corn, soybeans, and premixes of phosphorus, iron, and other minerals and vitamins essential for growth. The animals then convert feed into manure rich in nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and other nutrients beneficial to soil biology. This manure is applied to nearly 16 million acres of cropland across the United States, which is used to grow corn, soybeans, and other crops for another group of animals as the cycle begins again. The value of manure is that it contains nutrients. It also is a way to recycle nutrients, so we do not have to get new nutrients from mines or produce it through high energy sources. It, uh, it is very valuable for us to use it as a resource, a valuable resource. Crops need nutrients to grow. After crop harvest and before the next growing season, those nutrients, which were depleted in the soil from the previous season, need to be replenished. Until recently, many growers gravitated to commercial fertilizers when replacing nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and other nutrients in the soil. Charlie Wartman, a nutrient management specialist with the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, says the benefits of manure are no longer ignored. One thing that helped to boost its recognition were the high fertilizer prices that we saw in 2008. And, uh, you know, they were, people, crop producers could more easily see the value of the, the nutrients. It's my impression that um, the value of manure is being better recognized. There's more demand for it. Uh, there's less problem finding enough land to do a to agro you know manage the nutrients in an agronomically efficient way there's so much demand in fact that some farmers who have animals but no cropland are selling manure to farmers who only raise crops and need fertilizer why spend money on what's technically a waste product this graph shows the difference between two cornfields one was grown with no manure the other was enriched with manure from a swine operation if manure can add 10 bushels an acre to a 160-acre field, with the sale price of corn hovering around $7 a bushel, the increase in profit can be over $11,000. And that's only above the ground. What happens below the soil makes calculating the worth of manure even more difficult because manure improves soil quality and soil structure. Well, it's true it's easier to calculate dollar value based on what you can buy at the fertilizer dealer. And that's what a lot of times you do on nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus, perhaps some of the micronutrients. And but when you start looking at the biological life and the organic material, uh, you can't go to the co-op and buy organic matter. You can't go to the co-op and buy those microbes that are going to get your soil system working for you. A soil system that works for you means better water infiltration, less runoff, and less erosion. This means more precipitation and irrigation stays in the soil for the crop production, and with less runoff, fewer nutrients reach surface water. That's if the manure is applied correctly. While manure application may be known for its specialized equipment, the key to maximizing its potential is held in a relatively simple document. A Nutrient Management Plan, or NMP, helps manure applicators determine the correct amount of manure to distribute over a field, first by understanding the soil's composition. It is basically the backbone of our whole fertility system. So 
it, without knowing your soil fertility to begin with, it's very difficult to go out and just develop a fertilizer program. And so with the, we have the, our farms grid sampled and we take that information and then develop our manure management plan after that. Well, certainly from an agronomic standpoint, uh, livestock producers are now better coordinating their crop production and livestock production. To do that, they need to know the crop requirements for the uh, fertilizer nutrients, whether they're manure or commercial. And so a nutrient management plan lays all that out. How much manure you're going to produce, what's the analysis of it relative to nutrients, when are you going to handle it, and where did you put it? A nutrient management plan can be that simple. Soil testing not only shows which nutrients various soils need, but also to what extent. Crops need certain nutrients, such as nitrogen, to grow. However, too much nitrogen will be detrimental to crops and the environment. Farmers use manure samples to determine how much and what nutrients are available in the manure. This is then used to balance what the crops need with what is available. This is the premise behind an NMP. An NMP helps applicators know how much is enough, but not so much that the manure has a negative effect. The nutrient management plan can be a very positive thing for ensuring that the appropriate amount of manure is being applied at the right time in the right place to get the best yields and growth of their crops while also protecting the surface waters that surround them. Manure itself isn't a constant. The nutrients change based on the diet of an animal. Cattle, swine, or chickens don't eat the same feed. Different minerals and vitamins are ingested, so different minerals and vitamins are excreted. Different species have different composition of the main nutrients, and then of course it has to do with how they're fed and managed. So you can feed your cattle too much protein and you get higher nitrogen in your manure. You can feed uh, phytase to your pigs and get uh, less phosphorus. So we really do uh, stress the fact that every livestock operation has to know what's in their manure before they spread it, and then we can make better recommendations for them. The science has never been this exact, just as the equipment has never been this big. Manure spreaders in the early 1900s were horse-drawn and loaded by pitchfork. Since then, spreaders evolved and are now pulled and powered by tractors. Some are even mounted on trucks, allowing manure to be hauled greater distances. They've also grown to sizes that make early spreaders look like toys. Manure spreaders that are holding, uh, you know, 18, 20, maybe 24 tons, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're mammoth, you know. Uh, the cost of these, I think some of these spreaders would cost between $150 to $250 new, you know, back in the 30s and 40s. And now you're probably talking, uh, you know, 60 to maybe 100,000 for some of those large spreaders. And of course, then you have to have the horsepower and the, the large capacity tractor to, to pull those. The size of the spreader or hauler depends on the size of the operation producing the manure. And more animals means more manure to haul. With more than one cow, hog, or chicken in every operation, it's not feasible to transport manure to the field every single day. Farmers have to hold the manure in stockpiles, storages, or lagoons until it can be applied to fields. Stockpiled manure is solid in form and comes from cattle feedlots, poultry farms, horse stables, some dairy farms, and swine farms that utilize straw or other bedding which complicate manure handling and distribution. Stockpiling is important because it allows the proper timing of the manure application. Uh, it allows us to conserve the nutrients in the best way so we're able to make the most economic return for those nutrients. There's no sense in putting uh, nutrients on before the crop needs are there or before the field is ready. It's much like you don't make all three meals when you first thing when you wake up in the morning because you'd have more food for the day than you need. The farm is going to going to use this like you would do through a refrigerator. You're going to put your steak in the refrigerator and save it for dinner and that's kind of what's going on here. It matters what, how you build the pile, where you site the pile, and, and how long you let the pile exist uh, before you spread it back out onto the land. Uh, the, the whole concept is that as soon as a, an available field opens up, that the material goes out where, where we want it uh, to deliver nutrients. And, and so stockpiling is a temporary practice that livestock producers use to, to wait out 
uh, the, the time period of when the next available crop field is, is ready to, to have that manure put out. Manure comes in three consistencies, solid, liquid, and slurry, and each take different types of equipment to manage. Slurry manure is about the consistency of a milkshake. Liquid manure is like the consistency of water. They can be managed similarly in ponds, storages, or lagoons. Liquid manure can also be held in pits. Pits sit under barns and collect manure, while lagoons hold manure in an earthen structure until it can be applied. Both solid and liquid manure can be applied through different methods. Solid is generally applied using spreaders that displace the manure on top of the ground. It's taken from barns or stockpiles and loaded into a solid spreader. The spreader itself is driven by the tractor's PTO, or power takeoff. The PTO turns a gearbox that, in turn, carries manure on a conveyor belt to the back of the spreader, where it's dispersed with beaters. In Norfolk, the USDA Agricultural Research Service introduced a machine that could be the future of solid manure application. It's a manure subsurfer that injects dry manure below the soil's surface. This solid manure is relatively fine in particle size. It's housed in a box and then fed by augers down into the opening in the ground created by two coulters. So far, the subsurfer has shown positive results. It's never hurt the plant yield, and in many cases, it's actually increased the yield, sometimes as much as 30 to 35 percent. We think that's primarily because it keeps more nitrogen in the soil. And so in cases where the crop has plenty of moisture, and it, but the nutrient supply may be somewhat limited, it allows more efficient use of that nitrogen nutrient and gives more of a crop boost. Pote says the key to crop growth is keeping these nutrients in the root zone of the crop instead of losing them to the atmosphere or water bodies. The subsurfer also minimizes odor by placing manure below the ground. It seems to make a, a big difference, and if, it, if it's widely adopted, we think it, it will make a, a big difference in the whole industry. Uh, what it allows the farmer to do is to use those nutrients a whole lot more efficiently. This same method has been used in the application of liquid manure for years. It allows less of the valuable ammonia content to be lost or volatilized into the air. Slurry manure from manure storages is pumped into a spreader tank. The unit then takes the manure to the designated area of a field. On the rear of the tank are chisels, sweeps, discs, or coulter type openers that create a trench in the ground when lowered. The manure is then pumped from the tank, down tubes, and into the ground. There are a variety of incorporators that disturb residue differently. Immediate incorporation of manure injection can disturb less of the residue or organic material on the surface of the soil, but each method of application has its benefits and its drawbacks. When I was growing up, uh, we always had the saying, it smells like money when the manure is out there. And unfortunately, uh, a lot of people in the public want the uh, producers to incorporate the manure to reduce the odor. Yes, that does reduce the odor. Direct injection does that as well. Anytime you get the manure below the soil surface. But when it comes to tillage, I don't want to do that to incorporate because I'm breaking down that soil structure, I'm breaking down the soil biological life that I'm trying to build. And so I want the public to realize that, yes, you might smell manure for a day or two, but it's building the soil, it's going to keep the soil in place. Liquid manure can also be distributed through sprinkler systems such as center pivots, traveling guns, and other portable devices such as K-lines. Traveling gun systems are wheeled carts supplied with hoses and a large nozzle unit that sprinkles manure. Special reels are used to supply the big gun cart, much like the reels used for garden hoses. K-lines and other portable irrigation systems can also be used to distribute animal manures. Center pivots are overhead sprinkler irrigation systems consisting of a pipe and support trusses mounted on wheeled towers. Sprinklers are mounted on the pipe and the system rotates around a fixed point in the field. Center pivots have the advantage of being able to manage large volumes of manure in a short period of time. These sprinkler systems are very efficient, cost-effective, and can accurately apply manure with even distribution. They can also apply manure when a crop is growing, providing nutrients when the crops need them most. From a production point of view, um, we can distribute this material uh, in a very uniform manner, uh, not better than the ground rigs, for sure equal to, 
uh, and we can do it at a time when the crop needs the material that we're going to apply, the nutrients that are in the material. Uh, and so that really is a benefit uh, from the water quality point of view because now we don't have uh, nutrients out there in the soil that could potentially be leached. One of the main advantages of running K-lines, big guns, and to a greater extent, center pivots, is the time frame in which manure can be applied. Hauling liquid manure in spreader tanks is a time-consuming process. Tanks must be loaded, travel to the designated destination in a field, unload, and then travel back to load again. With center pivots, the only travel involved is the liquid itself, moving through the pipes of an irrigation system. Part of the rationale for running the, the liquid manure through uh, center pivots is due to the large volume of water that, that we develop by, by virtue of flushing the manure out of the production facility uh, rather than handling it by hand or having it go on into, into a, an underground pit. Uh, and so uh, we generate a lot of water in this process. And um, basically, if we tried to, to distribute all that water with a ground applicator, it would take months for that to happen. The option of center pivots for distribution is just one of the many advances in manure application. Technological progress in agriculture has increased the maximization of yield, while at the same time, protecting the environment. Soil testing for nutrients is a common practice, but the use of GPS and smartphones to guide and monitor equipment in the fields is still growing. Irrigation systems now feature a telemetry system, allowing a farmer to turn on, turn off, or simply monitor the pivot from a computer or smartphone. We have full control and monitoring capabilities, which allows us to have the pivot, see where it's at in the field, what's going on with it, change the rate, change the end gun settings, have a history log so we know exactly when an application occurred at and change that application depending on what's going on with the, the weather environment in the area as well. So when something's gone on in the middle of the night, uh, we can change the rate if we've had a little bit of rainfall. Uh, we can also completely shut down a system if something uh, changes on the, on the application out there that uh, we need to shut the machine off right away. We know about it right away. We absolutely want to know how much effluent was applied, when it was applied, and where it was applied to. And being able to automate some of those routines, I think most the average person would be very surprised to know how much technology is in motion on the family farm today. These technological preventative measures cut down on the time it would normally take to travel to the field. They're one of many environmental precautions taken by farmers and applicators. One of the things we do, we have now installed a monitoring system that goes under the pivots that calls our cell phone within seconds of that system stopping for any reason whatsoever. And so within a matter of minutes, we can be there to correct whatever issue is there. Widely available to the public, a global positioning system, or GPS, allows a more proactive approach to manure application. Much like the GPS in your car, farmers use GPS to guide where they've been in the field and where they still need to go. Applicators can also use it to see which area of a field is getting a specific rate of manure. We use the GPS to create a as-applied map for the producer and the crop consultant so they can go back and apply that to yield data, um, their nutrient management plan to show what nutrients were put down on, what, on the field so they can plan for the next growing crop year of what's available in the field for nutrient. We're all concerned about the environment. Producers and the public are, want to maintain the environment as best we can. And for livestock farmers, what they're concerned about is not over applying nutrients from manure or under applying nutrients. And GPS equipment allows them to measure the nutrient content of manure, but more important than that is mapping where it's applied on the field. And that way they can avoid under applying nutrients and then also avoid over applying nutrients. This technology, along with larger equipment and increased rules, regulations and planning, has given rise to a new job, the professional manure applicator. So there are small businesses focused entirely on animal manure management, businesses that make equipment, people that apply manure for a living every day, uh, people that develop permits, nutrient management plans, crop consultants that uh, make agronomic recommendations and, and, and broker manure, sell, great trade and sell manure. It is a group of very skilled, very professional people that do this work. Custom manure applicators specialize in hauling and applying manure commercially. Aaron Ross's company pumps over 200 million gallons of manure each year in the Midwest, from Minnesota 
to Texas. Well, the reason the farmers hire us instead of putting it on themselves is there's, it's a couple of reasons. Uh, but probably the greatest reason is because of the cost of the equipment and the, uh, the labor intensity of it. In order for them to hire the people to do it and keep all the equipment on hand, and it's just kind of like a combine where it's very seasonal, it would, they would have to be a very large operator to justify that. So uh, it's much cheaper for them to hire it then. Ross was one of many custom applicators at Norfolk's 2011 Manure Expo. And while they were there to look at the newest, biggest, and smartest equipment, Ross says they were also there because they care about what they do. David Anderson offers insurance options to applicators, and he believes the public may not understand how serious these applicators are about their careers. Well, the interesting thing about it is, and, and is that you'd be surprised how many of these guys um, have entire crews that you know are college educated. They this they treat this as a professional job. That's why they're here today, because they're here to learn about what they do, learn how to do what they do better, make those connections, make those, those um, networking um, contacts, and, and really improve the state of their industry. The guys who are here are the ones who are doing it on a year-round basis. These are the guys who really care about what they do. The Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, imposes strong regulations on the application of manure inspecting farms and performing flyovers to look at facilities that might be discharging. Ross says contrary to negative perceptions, applicators do care about affecting what's around them. I think the question is, what about the environment? We, uh, we like to think of ourselves as true environmentalists. We uh, are very concerned about any runoff type waters. We're very concerned about over applying. We, uh, we get the latest in technology in order to keep that from happening and uh, it's it's kind of a it's sort of a proactive approach to environmentalist concerns. It's become such a big business and it's such a valuable commodity that when you when you assess dollars to a commodity like manure the problems go away because who wants to pay those kind of dollars for application or transport cost and put it in a place where they don't want it. It's, it's a very strange place where uh, regulation, economics, and agronomy all want the same thing. We don't want to be putting nutrients where we don't need them. In the end, the technology and methods behind modern manure management serve the science. The main goal is to increase crop yields by maximizing the use of manure's nutrients. While that can mean more money for the farmer, it also means more supply and more food for the consumer. We're being challenged to double our grain outputs as an agricultural community by the year 2030. And the only way we're going to be able to do that is to continue to bring this technology and, and bring it back to the farm. And, and, and there is no place on the planet where there's more applied technology in motion than on the farm. The challenge of doing this and maintaining a, a food supply that people can afford is not a small challenge. And, and I think it's important that the average consumer understand these folks are running businesses, but they're also environmental stewards. And I, I think many times people drive by an agricultural operation, they get a whiff of something that they don't necessarily like, and they automatically associate that with something negative. The last thing I think anybody wants is to see our food sources out, you know, moved offshore and, and us becoming food importers. We're the leaders, we need to stay in that role, and agriculture is a great place to be. The world's population is now over 7 billion people. The United Nations estimates that by the year 2050, the world population will increase to 9.3 billion. Manure is a valuable soil builder and plant fertilizer, and can help feed this growing population. It reduces reliance on fossil fuels, and is a recycling system that is sustainable. It continues to prove its worth as brown gold for those who use it, and for those who consume the food it grows.